Ten. Plan nine. Eight. Seven. Six shots. Five. Quattro. We are the three. One ring to rule them all. Let's rock! All right. Well, good morning. Ohayou gozaimasu if you're in Japan. Uh, good afternoon if you're in North America. Welcome back to Fermented Cinema, and we're brewing film live. Uh, today's kind of a special day. I thought it'd be a good time to go over the 2024 film lineup. Very, very, very... Um, exciting stuff i guess lots of sequels lots of uh adaptations and very 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 little creativity okay so why don't we get into our opening title crawl Actually, whenever that goes through, I'm actually kind of scared to read it because I always know there's going to be a spelling mistake in there somewhere. I'm, I'm obviously awful at spelling and editing, too. Editing my own work. Oh, my God. Yeah, so it's uh, sequels, 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 and more sequels in La La Land. And that brings us to our Japanese word of the day. <laughs> Yes, today's Japanese word of the day is namakemono. And namakemono, as you probably guessed, means lazy. Yes, actually, it also means uh, sloth, which is interesting. So in English, we can also say, you know, you're a sloth, meaning you're lazy. Uh, so at the zoo, if you want to see uh, namake, namakemono, he's right there hanging out in the trees uh, or working in Hollywood these days, it seems. So we got uh, quite the lineup of films to go through today, um, begrudgingly, uh, than, much more begrudgingly than excitingly. Okay, let's see. So here's the, these are just the primary, the primary films being released this year. There are some others uh, that aren't on here, but uh, let's be honest, it, it really doesn't matter. Okay, let's get into it. Uh, the first one was Swim Night. Uh, this has already been released, so let's see how it did. And Swim Night was a... Oh. Oh. Well, that, that's, uh, that's not very good now, is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, 22% and 43%. I think we got a rotten splat there. Okay, wow. Um, I'm, glad that I, uh, I'm glad that I missed that one. Oh, and the Gord King's there. Thank you, Gord King. Nice to see you. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying um, all that Hollywood has to uh, feed us this year. All right. So who's next on the list? So uh, let's just uh, move right on then. Oh, next is Argyle. All right. Well, let's see how Argyle did. Uh, let's see how Argyle did. Oh, oh, 33%, eh? Ooh. That's a shame. Oh, my God. So uh, we're, we're really swinging some home runs off here now. Uh, Argyle, I believe, was an original feature. I think there was a thing where they actually made up an author and kind of pretended it was an adaptation. 
but at least I might give it credit that if it is actually an original work, even if it kind of flopped, uh, at least it was uh, something new. At least it was something new. Uh, <laughs> I haven't taken too many doses of their 2024 vintage. Yeah, yeah, it's a... Ooh, it's not fermenting very well right now. Let's just say that there's uh, there's a lot of sludge in this barrel. A lot of sludge in this barrel. Thank you, Gord King. Okay. Uh, well, moving right along. Uh, 2024 is really um hitting some homers here. Oh, Madam Web. Okay. Now this year. Now this was a Sony release, and as you know, this is obviously part. Uh, well, not directly part of the MCU, but it's Marvel. It's adaptation, comic book adaptation, you know, really popular stuff. Everyone loves comic books. How did we do? We did, uh, ooh, oh, 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 my God. Woo-hoo. Um, let's see what George has to say about that. That's a shame. Oh, God. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, Madam Web has become quite the meme. Uh, it's kind of being shown as, like, one of the major nails in the, well, there's many nails in this coffin now. But a major nail in the coffin of uh, just Marvel films and the MCU. And yeah, it's uh, whew, looks like we're, we're, we're doing really well here so far, Hollywood. Okay. Uh, now, up next is Dune. All right. So up next is Dune. Now, here's where the tone's going to change a little bit. Uh, for this one, let's get a little wowsy wow. Wowsy wow, wow. Yeah, uh, Dune looks good. Uh, I've been anticipating Dune. Uh, it was supposed to come out in November last year, uh, and I've been anticipating it since the, I saw the first uh, installment. Uh, Denise Villeneuve, the director of Dune, uh, and of course he's done other films such as uh, The Arrival, fantastic film, Blade Runner 2049, actually one of my favorite films to come out in the last 10 years, uh, and was probably the best theatrical experience I've had in the last decade. And then uh, the first Dune, of course, part one. And that was fantastic. Loved it. But it was definitely an incomplete movie because uh, this isn't so much a sequel as it is just a second half of a singular story. Uh, of course, it is an adaptation. Uh, if you don't know the novel Dune, you're obviously not a sci-fi fan and you've been living under a rock. And I suggest you read it. Uh, this one I'm can't wait to see. This is probably the only film this year that I'm actually anticipating to see uh, in the cinema. Uh, fortunately, I do have a, a bit of a handicap uh, since I'm in Japan. And I know Dune comes out, I believe, on March 1st in North America and uh, many European markets as well. So uh, all the YouTube community and all the film reviewers I know are going to be having a field day watching Dune, reviewing Dune. Unfortunately, it doesn't come out in Japan until March 15th. So I'm going to be uh, two weeks behind because uh, I want to give my first viewing uh, real experience in the theater. So I'm not going to see it <clears throat> any other way on the high seas. <clears throat> no, I want to experience Dune how it's supposed to be experienced on the big screen. Uh, so I can't wait uh, to watch Dune. The trailer looked absolutely fantastic. Um, and we do have some early reviews coming in. And 97%. So... Looking good, looking good. Um, and uh, some YouTubers uh, that I really respect, uh, such as like uh, Film Threat, uh, Chris Gore giving it his big stamp of approval. And that means a lot considering how much he loves the Dune universe and how much he uh, goes on about that. So very, very excited uh, to see Dune. And I believe Denise Villeneuve, uh, he's actually going to make it a trilogy. So he is going to continue, I believe, uh, Dune Messiah. Uh, so it is going to be a, so I believe he's kind of adapted the second one to act as like the middle chapter, uh, more so than a completion. So more like an Empire Strikes Back or uh, Two Towers is uh, one of the comparisons that's been thrown around a lot. Uh, yeah, Gord King. So looking forward to doing too. Yes, yes. I wish we could go see it together. And I'm going to be jealous because you're going to be watching it two weeks before me. It's going to be, it's going to be really difficult to avoid spoilers for that two weeks. Again, this is a major problem living in Japan is you're usually two weeks to sometimes a month behind the release schedule of North America. So uh, unfortunately, I just got to bury my head in the sand for a couple of weeks there until I can jump on that bandwagon. But really looking forward to it, really looking forward to it. 
All right. So, uh, so far we got uh, three strike, uh, <laughs> three strikeouts, but it looks like we have a hit. So, Dune Part Two. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a hit. So, looking forward to that. Oh well, let's move along. Twenty Twenty Four has got a lot of movies on the slate. Uh, okay. So, it looks like next here we got what everyone's been clamoring for: Kung Fu Panda Part Four. Mm, oh boy. Hmm, yeah. I think spoiler views should have a six month embargo. Yes, I agree. Yes, and it should be uh, criminally punishable, I think. You know, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not into author authoritarian governments or, you know, or, you know, government overstepping bounds, but this is kind of one of those big issues where you should spend a few nights in the slammer if you're spoiling the movie for someone else. Anyway, talking about spoiled, uh, we got uh, Kung Fu Panda 4. Yay. Uh, I feel like this is a film no one asked for. Uh, Kung Fu Panda 1, fantastic film. Absolutely loved it. Uh, I would say it's probably one of the best uh, computer, like CG animated films that came out. Kung Fu Panda, uh, Shrek. And those are actually probably my two favorite ones, Kung Fu Panda and Shrek. I've never been a huge um, Pixar guy. I, I like Toy Story. I like Wally. -E. Uh, Up is probably their best one, but I feel like a lot of Pixar gets uh, kind of feels like the same story every time. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid you've been served for the spoiler citation. Yes, you can just hear the boom, 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 the knock at the door. Oh God, they've come for me. I told them how the sixth sense ends. Oh no. So yeah, uh, if anyone's excited for Kung Fu Panda 4, uh, let, let me know in the chat there. Um, and I heard also, I heard this has Aquafina in it. And if you don't know who Aquafina is, um, congratulations, you're lucky. Uh, if you do, um, think of like Gilbert Gottfried's voice, except he's a woman and has absolutely no charisma when it comes to animated voices. So um, it's all the sandpaper with none of the joy. Uh, it's exact how I would say it. Uh, my favorite Pixar film is probably Toy Story 2. Uh, yeah, I like Toy Story 2, actually. That was a good one. Um, the third one was okay. I actually haven't seen the fourth one because by that time, I'm kind of done with Toy Story. Like, I think they're making a fifth, too. Oh, God, speaking of sequels. Uh, yes, I love Rango. Rango is an amazing film uh, and just the animation in it, like the textures are beautiful and the voice acting is wonderful. Ah, that's it. I got to watch that one again. I watched that. I've seen it twice, but it definitely deserves another watch. Yeah. Toy Story 4 is terrible. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> and that does not count as a spoiler, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So I'm probably uh, never going to see that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. All right, so we got Kung Fu Panda 4, a film no one asked for. And uh, speaking about uh, films uh, no one asked for, up next we have the new Ghostbuster film. Oh, there's a low-res JPEG. Yeah. Um, so the Ghostbuster franchise, uh, this is a weird one. Love the first Ghostbusters film. Classic. I have a big soft spot for the second one because uh, I actually watched the second one before I watched the first one. It was like the second one was always on TV. And I remember I actually, a little shameful now, I think I was like seven years old. I left my friend's birthday party early so I could get home and tape Ghostbusters 2. Now, my brother was home and he was going to tape it, but I did not trust him to pause out the commercials just as well as I could. So I had to get home. I had to tape it. And I rewatched that so many times. Uh, the River of Slime. Love that. I know it's hated by some hardcore uh, first Ghostbuster fans, but I like it. Uh, so it now is older. I do understand how the first one's much better. And the second one is probably now a seven out of 10 or maybe even a six out of 10 for me, but it's a guilty pleasure. Uh, obviously the, uh, <clears throat> the 2016 Ghostbusters, uh, that was awful. I tried to watch it, got halfway through and I was kind of like getting an aneurysm or something. So I was out. Uh, after that um, was Afterlife and Afterlife, I see what they were trying to do, but it actually kind of fell flat for me, uh, especially the second half. The first half had promise, and the second half, ooh, like you want to talk about ghosts. 
like, oh, God. Um, <laughs> of course, we had Harold Ramis, who actually did come out as a ghost, but uh, these guys aren't too far off. Uh, let's just say that. Yeah. I understand even agree with a lot of the criticisms for Ghostbuster 2, but I could never bring myself to dislike it. Yeah, it's it's got a charm. It's got a real charm to it. Uh, it obviously follows the formula too much of the first film, but it has some has some of the best lines in the whole in the whole series in the whole franchise like some of the funniest stuff they say uh especially um uh harold ramus uh yeah uh i would watch that 50 folds over this new ghostbusters afterlife sequel uh, i watched the trailer it looks i don't know um i'll probably give it a watch uh not at the theater i don't feel like doing that Ahoy, leaving a like and love. Oh, thank you, Stark of Iron. Thank you very much. Yes, and for those out there, Stark of Iron, he got monetized. Yes, so there was a little celebration uh, yesterday. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And I think he's having another celebration today as well. Ah, Sci-Fi Sith Dan. Hello there, Fermented Cinema. Oh, that's me. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying the stream. Uh, we're just going through a whole bunch of turds. I mean, um, the terrific films on the slate so far this year. Uh, sequels, sequels, and squeakles. All right. Uh, is anyone actually excited for this new Ghostbusters movie? Anyone there in the comments? Uh, are you going to see it in the theater? Oh, it sounds like Toadie's got a big party tonight. All right. You know, he's going to be hookers and blow, right? Ah, that's celebrating like a champ. All right. Uh, the best thing I can say for 2016 Ghostbusters is that it made for good fodder for one of my better videos. Yes, this is true. Um, uh that's actually how i really got into watching the gourd gang uh check out his uh it's a really good video on 2016 ghostbusters uh lots of fun editing uh it's just it's just great to watch uh <laughs> lots of good clips and yeah you know what uh talking about ghostbusters 2016 uh let's see what does uh kramer have to say about that's it a shame. yeah there we go it's a shame it's a shame oh boy uh Thank you, Gord King. Yes, yes, Gord King. Send in uh, some congrats, uh, Tony Stark's way. And as we say in Japan, congratulations. And oh, for those that don't know, uh, who might have missed it that came in, today's uh, Japanese word is namakemono, which means lazy. Namakemono Hollywood. Lazy, lazy, lazy Hollywood. Yes, so write that down. There will be a test, okay? I'm going to do Actually, I'm going to start doing that. I should start having tests on here. Everyone, oh, does any remember last week's word, Japanese word? If you remember last week's Japanese word, please post it in the comments. This is your challenge. All right, so uh, getting back to the, to the lineup here. Next, we have Godzilla. X Kong, Godzilla versus Kong. All right. Um, this is another film I am not really anticipating uh, to watch. So support from Mid Cinema, but when he wraps up, I'll be running my show. Yes, yes. Uh, when I'm done here, if you're watching me, I recommend you go over to uh, Stark of Iron. Uh, but after I'm done, of course. Uh, don't worry, it won't be too long of a show today. Ah, there we go. Star Wars. Yes, yes. That was the word of the day last week. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lino, and happy to see you. I'm glad you're watching. So he gets a gold star, a gold cookie. And as a reward, he does not need to watch any movies except for Dune in, 26, uh, in 2016, in 2024. Uh, yes, uh, he doesn't have to watch movies in 2016 either since uh, we're not even there anymore. Uh, yeah, so is, is anyone really into this expanded universe, the Godzilla versus Kong? Um, I've seen all of them except for the last one, which I heard was okay. Um, so far, the only one I've really enjoyed was uh, Kong Skull Island, and I liked it because you can really watch that one as a standalone. And it has Brie Larson in it, of all things, but she's actually um, uh, she actually half decent in there. Uh, funny thing is Brie Larson is actually someone I don't hate. I just feel like she's was thrown into Hollywood at the wrong time. And, you know, when you're, when you're on the playground, you got to play the games that are thrown to you. So feel a little bad about that. Sometimes I've got an unfair advantage. Yes. Yes. Uh, Lino does have an unfair advantage since he lives here in Japan with me. 
and he is fluent in Japanese. It'd be better if it were Godzilla. Yes, Godzilla. Oh my God, he's coming to destroy the city. Yeah, if you want to watch a good Godzilla film, uh, Godzilla minus one. Just watch that again. Uh, this one here, I'm sure it'll have lots of overstuffed, bloated action sequences with a uh, cardboard cutout characters. Uh, blah, nothing too, um, nothing too exciting there. Lots of ungodly colors and stuff. Uh, so let me see. What's what's my feeling on this film? <sighs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Moving on, moving on. Uh, let's see, who's next? What's next on the execution list here? Oh, God, Night Swim came up again. We don't want that. Uh, if, let's see. Okay, if. This poster tells you everything you need to know. Um, it's in English. And um, it's got the letter I and F in it. And they're big, they're big. So you know it's bold. It's a bold movie. It's a bold movie, yes. And... Um, the shadow's fuzzy. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know, uh, this film, I think, is an adaptation of a kid's book. And it's about, like, a little girl who can see people's um, imaginary creatures. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is in it, I believe. Um, <laughs> that sounds like a Jordan Peele title. <laughs> yeah, that does. Yeah. Yeah, that's a sequel to Us. <laughs> Oh my gourd! Ah, bringing out the gourd puns. Oh my goodness! I'm gonna have to squash these puns. Ah, you get it? You get it? Nah. So yeah, uh, is anyone looking forward to if? Does anyone have anything to say about if? Um, I, I watched the trailer last night. It looks, it looks fine enough. Um, this might be a, maybe like a good watch for home. Or something. It, it doesn't look like theater material for me. Uh, so that one, I'll, I'll kind of wait it out and just see uh, how that goes. All right, uh, let's move along here. Um, oh, next we have Furiosa. All right, so Furiosa is the prequel to the reboot to the sequels of Mad Max. All right, you guys following here? We need like one of those diagrams where they're connecting all the freaking uh, pictures together. Sounds iffy. Oh, 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 there we go. Pun of the day. I'm looking forward to the sequels and and but. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget the, pre uh, the prequel. So <laughs> I, can, I can use these in my English classes in Japan. All right. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now I forgot what they're called. Like <laughs> connecting words, whatever. All right, so we got Furiosa. Now, uh, this movie is like polarizing, but uh, I absolutely loved Fury Road. I loved it. Um, some people complained that it didn't have Mad Max enough in it, but I actually felt it was uh, Mad Max still had a lot of agency in that film, and he ended up being like he was still a strong character, and he came out like he was the one that told them, like, let's go back and fight. Uh, he had knowledge. He was teaching uh and it was a lot of fun and it kind of fell in line with how mad max was honestly in like uh the road warrior whatnot because he always was just kind of a vessel into the world and just kind of like falls into a greater story that's happening um so i, I did feel fury road it it really fell in line with the spirit of the uh of the mad max universe i have cautious optimism about furiosa Fury Road is brilliant. Yes, yes. I would say that's my feeling too, Gord King, is I'm cautiously optimistic. Um, if they can capture the spirit that they had in Fury Road and the tone, it could be fantastic. And if it treats the male characters with respect, uh, like they did in Fury Road, uh, then I'll be more than happy. Uh, one thing I am uh, getting a little concerned about is it does seem to be a little more CG heavy. Where Fury Road was huge on on the on the practical stunts and the practical effects. Yes, it did have some CG elements. Uh, I'm, I'm so I'm really hoping that the trailer was just kind of like effects that maybe hadn't been fully pol polished yet. And I'm really hoping that they continue with the actual physical practical stunts. 
And Mad Max has more dialogue for you than Road Ro- Warrior. Exactly. Yeah, he barely speaks in in uh, Road Warrior. Uh, yeah, I never understood those complaints either. It made no sense because if you watch Road Warrior, the story is not really about him. It's about that community, and I forget the character. Uh, it's like the leader of that community. He's more of of the main character. Yeah, the CGI and bloated budget do concern me. Yeah, yeah. Once you start seeing these budgets hit like 150, 200 million, 250 million, then you're like, ooh, God, what are they spending on that on? Uh, I hope it's. I hope they spend it on sand because I hope the only place they could film this was like in the jungle. They're like, shit, we got to make this place look like a desert. Cut down the trees. We got to ship in a whole bunch of sand. I'm hoping that's where all the budget went to. You know, because at least then it won't all be CG effects. So I'm cautiously, as you put it, cautiously optimistic on this one. Uh, I can't wait. Uh, this is probably my second theatrical film I'm going to watch. So, so far I got Dune. And Furiosa that I'm actually going to watch in the movie theater uh, that I actually want to give my money to. My hard-earned money. Uh, next, we got something really nobody asked for. <laughs> uh, we got the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Um, the trilogy was decent enough. Uh, I liked probably the second one the most. Uh, they're all filmed in Vancouver, by the way. A little hometown shout-out there. Uh and as always, it's supposed to be San Francisco. I'm so tired of Vancouver not playing itself. Uh, go on my channel for that. I do have some videos about Vancouver uh, masquerading as different places around America and the world. So please check those videos out. The only Bad Max movie explicitly about him is the first one. Yeah, I would say so too. Yeah, because the, the third one, even though I don't like it as much as the first two, the third one is the same formula where he comes in and he just becomes a cog in like a bigger story that's going on. Uh, so Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, is this on anyone's radar? Is anyone looking forward to this one? Did anyone ask for this? Speak up now. I want to know. I want to know who to blame. I mean, I want to know how you feel. Uh, yeah. Uh, this one is, that's pretty much all I got to say. Uh, kind of nothing in, not, nothing emotional towards that one at all. Uh, after that, uh, you know what? After that, I, I going through this, I just started to get so bored that I'm just I'm not even, I didn't, I didn't bother to get uh, poster stills anymore for them. Screw it. All right. Next is Ballerina, which I believe is a John Wick uh, spinoff or something. Kingdom of the Empire of the Galaxy of the Planet of the Apes. Yes, yes. Yes, <laughs> Kingdom of the Wormhole of the Empire of the Galaxy of the Star Cluster of the Planet of the Moons of the Apes. There we go. Now that's a movie I want to see. I'll see Kingdom if I hear good things, but I'm very neutral on it at the moment. Yeah, so exactly, same same thing with me. Yeah, if, if it blows up and like everyone I respect on YouTube is like gushing about it, yeah, I'll go see it. Like again, I'm open to seeing any of these if it turns out they're amazing, uh, but... Let's just say my uh, my crystal ball here is uh, mm, not really big on this one. Uh, then, yeah, next, next we have this uh, ballerina. Uh, now, this is a shame. All right, hope I don't lose any subs on this one. But I haven't watched the John Wick series. It's true. I think I've watched about 10 minutes of one movie that my friend was watching. It's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm going to watch it and get into it. Everyone loves it. I'm going to watch it, but then I go to work and then I do something else. And then I got to take my kids to the park and then I got to edit my next YouTube video. And somehow I never, ever get time to watch the John Wick series. And they just keep making another one and another one and another one. I'm like, oh, shit, I got that's like homework now. I really got to catch up on this. Uh, I know they're beloved and it's kind of seen as like the only recent new franchise that's been successful. That's not based on something from the 80s or 90s now. Uh, you're not alone. Hmm. Lino, are you insinuating something here? Are you behind me? Ah, no, no. Okay. <laughs> you got me worried there for a second. Uh, yeah. Well, Lino, you know, maybe one day we should watch it together. The first John Wick is great. The sequels or the squeakquels, not as much. Entertaining, but they get a bit too silly. Yeah, that's. Usually the trajectory that a lot of like action films seem to uh, ride along is uh, the first one's great. Kind of like Die Hard series. First one, freaking amazing, but actually quite a grounded film. Uh, 
a few suspensions of disbelief, but not too much. Second one, uh, no pun intended with the airplanes, still a little grounded, uh, but it starts to get a little more fantastical, especially towards the end. And by the time you're in the third one, he's like a freaking Marvel superhero, essentially. Uh, the, the fourth one was like a guilty pleasure and never saw the fifth one. And yeah, so I'm guessing that's kind of the John Wick trajectory as well. I got to get on that. I'm going to watch the first one one day. When I do, you know, I'll do a review on it. Ah, that sounds good. That does sound good. Talking to myself here. All right. Uh, next is Bad Boys. <laughs> Bad Boys 4. Um, uh, uh, what's my feeling on Bad Boys 4? Let's see here. Uh, how can I sum it up? <sighs> yeah. Um, I, I saw Bad Boys 1 and 2. I remember Bad Boys 1 had, like, Tia Leona or something, her name is, who was, like, David Duchovny's wife at the time. She was, like, one of those women that I felt like Hollywood was trying to make famous, but no one ever really bought into it. She was, like, in a couple films. Well, she was in Jurassic Park 3, too, yeah. Uh, she was always kind of, she was kind of, like, the female equivalent of, like, Kevin Costner, where it's, like, maybe in the most absolutely perfect role. She could do something, but otherwise she's just kind of like a wooden, wooden character. Uh, okay, well, that was a bit of a sidetrack. But yeah, Bad Boys. Uh, is anyone fans of the Bad Boy franchise beyond maybe the first one? Like, is this what you want to see? Is, is Hollywood giving you what you want? They should have saved Bad Boys for Life for Part 4. Bad Boys for Life. Yeah, oh my God, what were they doing, eh? Ah, See, like, like, like we, should, we should be in control of this. You know, like Hollywood, they got all these overpaid executives. and But, you know, they need us. They need us. But, you know, we're not part of that bubble. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not uh, big on... Uh, I've never seen a Bad Boys movie. Yeah. I think I saw the first one in the theater. And it's, um, it's essentially like Miami Vice is how I would describe it. It's yeah, it's entertaining enough, but it's definitely nothing I'm saying that you have to go see. Uh, that's for sure. Oh, and then moving on, let's go. To, let's go to June, June fourteenth. Uh, we got Inside Out two uh, from the creatively bankrupt studio of Pixar, Pixar Disney, uh, which is like only producing sequels now, I believe. Um, yeah, uh, the first Inside Out was um, okay. I watched it on the airplane uh, going back to Vancouver from Japan. Uh, that was, uh, uh, it's like, oh, well, people talked about it, so I may as well see it. And it was um, it was so-so, I guess. Uh, it had some cute moments, uh, cute characters, but ah, again, it, it hit that that sappy Pixar-ness for me. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not big on the sap. Uh, not that I don't dislike an emotional film. I actually love emotional films. Something like Stand By Me, that's an amazing film. Uh, it, it hits you hard. Uh, but Inside Out, it just felt like it was trying too hard. Uh, the emotional scenes largely felt they were just trying too hard. And I'm not sure, this is a deep pull. I'm not sure if any of you knows this. Has anyone ever watched Herman's Head? Herman's Head was like a short-lived sitcom TV series where it was literally about the different personalities in his head discussing about what he should do for his day. It was literally inside out, but in a 1990s TV sitcom form. So there's absolutely nothing original uh, about that concept. Heading home, but be listening. And Inside Out is the most overrated, overrated Pixar movie. Yes, thank you, Gord King. Yes, yes. Ah, well, safe journey home. And uh, thank you for continuing to listen. Uh, I do have a surprise coming up soon. And... Uh, you don't want to miss it, so uh, please stick around, but also drive safe or walk safe or ride your bike safe or be safe on the subway or however you're getting home there. Oh, anyway, you are a gourd. Uh, get back to the patch safely. So, yeah, uh, Inside Out 2. Uh, what's my feelings on that one? Oh, my God. We're getting a lot of those. Uh, then we got a... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. We got a quiet place day one. All right, another sequel, yay! Uh, but this this is this is a prequel to the prequel, or is this a a sequel to the prequel? Uh, I I can't keep up again. Like ah oh, god, um, a quiet place again. That's another film that was okay. 
Um, I had a lot of nitpicks with this concept. Uh, I felt like one or two more draft rewrites could have really tightened it up. There was like some clever things, but then there were some things that just didn't were very contradictory for the universe itself. I'd have to rewatch it to pick up some specific examples, but just like how like some ways they are, you know, they're playing board games with like fluff, not to make noise, but then other times it's like <laughs> they're doing something that's incredibly loud. I'm like, they don't hear that. Um, yeah. Uh, this could be, I could have um, a bit of interest in seeing this one because I do love alien invasion films. And I do love like like the first day of invasions or like uh, apocalypse films. Like, for example, zombie movies. I love, I love the start of the zombie apocalypse. Uh, after everything falls apart, unless it's like really well done, like uh, Day of the Dead, uh, I get bored. Um, like The Walking Dead, I got so bored after that because it just ended up being the same thing, repeat, 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 uh, with like no conclusion. Uh, I was out. Uh, I had hope for um, the uh, the spinoff to The Walking Dead, but only the first season had anything to do with the start of the of the epidemic of the pandemic, and then it just became another Walking Dead. So I was out on that one as well. Can't wait for them to get to day seven. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. No, no. We need seven more prequels. We need a sequel. We'll go to day eight first, and then we'll go the day before day one. And then we're going to go for the evening after day two, which is on day three. So don't get confused here, people. We're working out. It's a well-oiled machine here, all right? Uh, yeah. Uh, again, this one, uh, I probably won't see in the theater, but I may find <clears throat> other means to see it. Let's see. Wink, wink there. All right. Uh, then we got, oh, oh, fuck. I mean, oh, oh, darn. <sighs> Despicable Me 4. Yeah, this is a, uh, if you're in Japan, if you live in Japan, you hate minions. You hate them. The Japanese love minions. They're everywhere. Minions merchandise, minions credit cards, minions costumes. Uh, I thought the minions were cute enough in the first Despicable Me. Like, oh, okay, that's, you know, kind of novelty, kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, people obsess People absolutely obsess over minions uh, here in Japan. It's uh, it's quite fascinating how much they love them. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm not. That's kind of soured me on minions now. So I'm not the biggest minion guy. Uh, it, yeah. Uh oh. I think my daughter's looking forward to it. Oh, I'm sorry, Lino. It looks like you got a date on July 3rd or two weeks after July 3rd here in Japan. Better get your tickets ordered now. Uh, well, it could be fun to go with your family. Uh, I've actually haven't, I got a five-year-old son and I have yet a two-year-old daughter too. And I've yet to take them to the movie theater. So I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to uh, have that first experience. Uh, that should be, uh, it should be interesting. All right. Um, whew, man, this is getting exhausting talking about all these sequels. Oh God. <laughs> Feel like i've seen all this before it's like having like non-stop uh deja vu uh like honestly another japanese word i could use for today is natsukashi which uh literally means nostalgic like the story isn't bad in that series though minions are overplayed yeah exactly yeah uh my wife wanted to watch the minions movie uh so we watched it and yeah when it's just the minions oh my god that gets uh that gets tedious after a while yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't recommend that uh, un unless you're a masochist. You know, some people like a little torture every now and then. All uh, right. Uh, gosh, I'm even debating continuing now. Like this is, uh, 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 well, let's just sludge through it. Um, up next, we got Twisters, the sequel to Twister. Um, you know, I'm just going to do rapid fire now because this is, this is Hollywood. This is getting old. This is getting old. I only got... Uh, so many hours in my life, you know. Uh, okay, Twisters, another sequel no one asked for. Uh, this time there's going to be more tornadoes, I guess, or something. And and this is also, the, you know, I don't like this at all because, uh, of course, um, Bill Paxton passed away. So who wants to watch a Twisters film without Bill Paxton? Yeah, no, pass. Uh, here. You know, this deserves, this deserves this right here. 
<sighs> yeah, that's it. That's out. Uh, Deadpool. Uh, oof. Uh, you know, there's a lot, a lot in Deadpool. Uh, it's happening. Uh, lots of all the rumors, all the, you know, the, the, of course, the writer's strike and everything that delayed that one. And yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of done for anything Marvel. Uh, moving on. I know some people like really like Deadpool. That might be something I'll watch you know, later on. Uh, then we got Borderlands. Uh, I watched the trailer for this. Uh, I'm guessing. I actually. I'm, I'm gonna come out and say it. I have no idea what this is about. Uh, like this franchise, I have no idea about it. I know it is an adaptation of uh, manga or a graphic novel or something. Um, uh, Borderlands. Uh, I watched the trailer, and uh, it for me, it looked like an AI generated uh, Mad Max. This is how I could describe it. Yeah, uh, so moving on. Um, Alien Romulus, uh, that's probably going to be terrible because uh, it's doing one of the things I hate the most and it's pretty much teenagers in space. Uh, their whole marketing thing is we wanted to get a new young cast in it. Ooh, big red flag up. No, I like my sci-fi grounded. I like it where I believe that these are people that are you know, working jobs in space. Uh, they need some maturity, a range of ages. Uh, nope, so uh, probably out on that one. Uh, Craven, I uh, have no idea. Next, Beetlejuice 2. All right, this one's perked my interest. Uh, Beetlejuice 2. I love the first Beetlejuice, probably one of my favorite movies. Uh, actually, Gord King's driving right now. I'm good in uh, uh, in March, in the end of March. I can't remember the exact date. I'm going to be on uh, his live stream and we're going to go over Beetlejuice, the classic, classic 80s film. Uh, so please tune into that. Looking forward to that. Um, but the sequel, ooh, this, this is one that could really go either way. Uh, either they could nail it, uh, but I, I'm really weary because Tim Burton, like his films, uh, ever since like Alice in Wonderland, uh, they have this awful uncanny valley look to them because they're so CG heavy, but they're also so dark. It's like, I don't know how to describe it. They're like, uh, they're, they're dark, but also saturated at the same time. Uh, it's like he has the aperture just like freaking closed or something. Like, I don't know. Uh, it's uh, so I'm really hoping it'd be if he went back to the practical effects and like did like a real good homage, like to Beetlejuice and kept the style uh, that could maybe go a long way in, uh, in getting me interested. But if it's just another CG puke fest, uh, I'll probably be out. Uh, to be honest, the last good movie he made, I think, was um, Sleepy Hollow. Maybe that might be the last one of his I really like, uh, or, or Sweeney Todd. I think, or maybe Sweeney Todd. Uh, whichever one of those uh, was the last one that came out. Ooh, uh, Transformers One. Uh, all right, all right. That's it for Transformers One. Uh, Joker. Uh, yeah, um, okay. Uh, there's a lot of people that are excited for this, but that are also worried. Uh, of course, it's got Lady Gaga in it. Um, uh, that one could be an interesting one, just to see the fallout from that, just to see what happens. Uh, next, uh, Venom 3. Okay, Venom 3. <sighs> okay, moving on. Uh, glad. Oh, God, Gladiator 2. Now, this is a weird one. And I'm not sure if anyone can help me in the chats on this one, but I believe this is not directed by Ridley Scott. Um, I'm not so sure about that, but this this is a, a weird one for a sequel. And I believe Russell Crowe's also not in it. So, yeah, if they pull that one off, uh, all, that, that'd be great, but uh, uh, I'm not counting on it. Uh, the War of the Rohirrim. Now, this is... Uh, yeah, something Lord of the Rings. I don't know much about this one, even though I absolutely adore Lord of the Rings, love the books, uh, love the uh, Peter Jackson films. I even I even like the Hobbit trilogy to an extent. Uh, I believe the Hobbit trilogy could have been edited down into a single three-hour feature. That would have been amazing. Uh, yeah, the Hobbit trilogy has some good performances. It's got some fun sequences, some great music. Uh and a, and a nice production design. Uh, just don't watch it in the 48 frame rate. That was awful. Uh, watch it in a good 24 uh, frame rate. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, I'm not sure 
uh, who's producing this one, if it's Amazon or not, if it's Amazon, it's going to be garbage. Um, yeah, uh, that one could go, uh, that one could go sideways. Uh, it's always a shame when a movie that can be made great use of practical effects, double down CGI. Yeah. But I guess the value for money is too hard to pass up. Well, the, but the funny thing is uh, lots of times nowadays, uh, the CGI is not even cheaper than the practical effects. Like these budgets are huge. Uh, it's just lazier. And that takes us back to our word, namake mono. Uh, the CG is, is the lazier. Um, uh, if anyone saw like the, the, the animated show Home Movies and he says, oh, we can just fix it in post. We can just fix fix it in post. That's like the feeling I get from all these CG laden films. It's, oh, whatever. We'll, we'll fix it later. Uh, we'll add something later. Uh, there'll be a monster over there later. Just, just fuck it. Move on. Uh, that's what this always feels like when you, cause I'm not wholly against CGI. Like it's a good tool and it can really enhance a film if used appropriately, sparingly and effectively. Uh, then we got, Oh, for fuck's sakes, we got the karate kid. All right. Uh, what do I think about another karate kid? Uh, and then we got uh, Sonic 3. I barely knew that they made a second. Um, so that tells you how much I'm into that series. And then, oh, God, we got Mufasa. Uh, Mufasa, you know what you get. Oh, my God, that's just going to be awful. Because, um, again, it's that that creepy as hell, lifeless, soulless uh, CGI uh just it was just awful man I, I i hated that film uh the the new lion king remake it was just terrible because it, it took it was like here let's take the lion king and let's suck all the warmth and humanity out of it and then, and then re-release it it was just awful and i'm pretty sure that's what mufasa is going to be too oh, disney sheep herder talking about disney man ah, yours must have been burning how do you inhale hope everyone is doing well yeah well they seem to be doing well We've actually had a, a pretty nice active chat here today. Uh, lots of good comments and insights. Uh, Disney Shirtbird, are you, uh, you uh, coming in here? Don't worry, i got a big surprise in a minute. We just went through the whole lineup. Uh, I'll summarize it like this. Uh, looking forward to Dune 2. Cautiously optimistic for Furiosa. Uh, might watch A Quiet Place Day 1 for free somehow. And... Beetlejuice could go either way, and everything else looks like poison. Uh, yeah, that sums it up pretty well. And the word of the day was namake mono, which is Japanese for lazy. All right. Now, I promise a surprise. Here's the surprise. Don't worry. I'm not taking my pants off. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Here comes the surprise. There is another film that's had its release uh, this year. I haven't watched it yet, but I do have the trailer, and it looks amazing. It's a sequel, too. It's a sequel. So it does meet our theme. I'm not sure if you've heard of the brilliant mind, Neil Breen. He is probably the best film auteur for crap cinema. Just absolutely, hilariously awful films that are... He is the David Lynch of bad movies. And it looks like... Uh, He's outdone himself this time. So let's watch. Pretty spooky so far. Cade, The Tortured Crossing. So Cade is a character in his last film where he played hit twins. A Neil Breen film that were obviously godlike because this man has a huge god complex. Copyright Neil Green Phillips, just in case. You gotta hammer that home, okay? I think together we can make a success of this project. That is definitely not a still photo. They are. Yes. Our heroes. This guy's the master of green screens. I uh, we so you know. will never let them down. Woohoo! And pop two. Oh yeah. This youth trafficking is disgusting. We had <laughs> yes. two more last night. I think I think Neil Breen teaches a master class in how to use uh, stock images and footage. Oh god. <laughs> Nightmares. <laughs> okay, I'm 
sorry. Uh, <laughs> now those are some quality extras. Is that woman like morph like morphing into her wheelchair? What the hell's going on here? We're That's what I want to we know. Can. We're trying. We're trying. That's not good enough. That's right, Neil Breen. This is not good enough. Huge computer screens. Oh, I missed it. Dang it. Then go! Ah! Help! Neil, no means no. It looks like my physical. Uh, 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 okay, so, like, what's the story? Uh, <laughs> to... Neil Breen is a very unsettled mind. <laughs> God, this guy needs business. As does this guy. I want to see where my money's been going. Well, obviously, not into this film. Megan, what do you know about the patient trafficking that's going on here? <laughs> what do you know about the gene editing research? That's what I want to know. You must know something. Oh, yes. That is definitely not a fake There's mustache. There's been a huge increase in the amount of kidnapping of the youths and runaways that are being used for medical testing. Uh, we'd like you to keep a lookout for any irregularities that might happen at your lab. We can Jeez. make a difference with the... How many takes did that line? How many takes to get that line out? We've taken in six new patients this week. And action. We've lost two. <laughs> we can't afford oh to God. lose any. Patients are money. I seem to use the same costume. You must Wherever have there's an injustice, I will be there. Wherever there's a fight, we will be there. I'm a noble man. I will never. His acting is so wooden. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, huh? He actually does remind me a little bit of Kevin Costner, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, this is right out of Lord of the Rings. This is a Rivendale. And this is from <laughs> the Rings of Power. They are coming for you, my warriors. <laughs> the writers are from. This is what I've been preparing you for. <laughs> yes! That is what I call action. I, you know what? I think that's the best movie this year. That's I, I got to give that. Wow, D. Wow, wow. Yeah, that's that seal of approval right there. Holy cow! That is 2024's number one film that I'm looking forward to. I can't wait to get together with a few friends, uh, get some nice brews together, you know, and get uh, smash drunk and have a fever nightmare watching that. that that's just going to be great. Did he steal that scene from Kung Fu Panda 3? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that could be one of the inspirations there. Uh, that has to be an inspired mind to put that together, right? I just I just love the use of green screens. Well, it's interesting because Neil Breen is the most bizarre level of self-aware. Because he'll pick up on small things that his fans say. But he'll. I still don't think he realizes that people are actually making fun of him. Because he had a couple movies in a row where he's like in the desert because he lives in Las Vegas. He's in the desert the whole time filming on location in the desert. And people said, enough with the desert. So he said, okay. And now he's making this like green screen slop fest. That's just amazing. From Incident, tell me, is this movie getting worse or better? <laughs> uh, I would say they're getting worse. Um, his first movie obviously cost the most money uh his first, his first movie was double down and you can see like production stills from the back where he actually hired like a decent amount of crew you know he had like a boom mic operators he had people bouncing the lights you know he had you know grips and stuff like that he had he had an actual production crew and he shot and it's on shot on film too 
but then as each film goes it the locations get more limited and there's more use of obviously a green screen like in his uh, garage or something and and uh the cameras have gotten worse and like literally i saw some produ production stills from like his uh last film and it's like just him with like the actors and to set the camera on a tripod and press record and jump into the scene quickly uh so yeah i'd, I'd say they're getting worse they're getting worse but they're also each one of them is, is is a nugget, a unique nugget of entertainment. So I definitely recommend. Uh, it's worth, worth the watch. Yeah. Uh, I recommend watching the whole Neil Breen series. Like, literally, I think it's Double Down. And after that, uh, he has um, I'm Here Now. And then he had his best one was Faithful Findings. Absolutely gem of a bad movie. you got to watch it. For me, it rivals The Room for best bad movie ever made. Uh, then after that was Pass Through, I believe. And then he had Twisted Pair, which is, and this is a sequel to Twisted Pair. And if you listen to this guy talk, he hammers it home that these are feature length film. Like they, they are like, I forget how he phrases it, but it's like, these are feature length feature films, like official, they're released in uh, movie theaters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Wonder if it, <laughs> Raddies ever heard of him. Oh, the Razzies, you mean? The Razzies. I like the Raddies. I think the Raddies should be given to Disney shows now. Um, yeah, I wonder. The Razzies must have. The people at the Razzies. Uh, cause obviously, they like Obviously, they like bad movies. Um, even though in the past, they've actually nominated some films that actually turned out to be pretty good. I think Starship Troopers got a bunch of Razzies. And it's like, Jesus Christ, did you even know what that film's about? Did you miss the whole point? Um, so yeah, uh, all I know is that if you haven't seen Neil Breen, watch it tonight. It's just this whole 2024 lineup, except for Dune 2 and maybe Furiosa, throw it out. Replace those all with Neil Breen films and you have a much better time. Uh, I think some of them you can watch on YouTube, maybe not. Uh, someone uploads them every now and then. Uh, trying to buy his films is a nightmare because each one has like its own website and there's like this weird process. And then if you do get it, you're going to get a DVD in a jewel case. It's awesome. It's like a flashback to like 2003. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, you'll never you'll never guess that he's uh, he's self distributed. Like oh my god. Um, and funniest thing is he also released a three hour lecture on how to make films. He pretty much did his own master class, and he goes all about. Uh, uh, you know, how, how to do the screenplay, how to do special effects, how, how to do, because as you can see, they're, they're seamless back there. Like, I thought, I thought those actors, I thought they were all interacting with a real environment. I had no idea that those were just JPEGs uh, in, until I researched it, you know, like that was brilliant. And it's, it's just hilarious. And then he even goes into like how to distribute your film. <laughs> it's like, oh God, listen, you're sending out DVDs burnt on your home computer, probably with a CD stomper to get the label on in jewel cases. You're probably not the best person to ask questions about uh, distribution. Uh, the, the guy's just like, just hilarious. Uh, just following him, a uh, real unique individual, a real auteur, uh, the David Lynch of bad films. And trust me, I'm going to feature some more. I'm featuring more of his films in the future. So uh, there's a lot to go through there. Uh, well, I actually, it's, uh, now you're just being very sarcastic, aren't you? What, me, sarcastic? No, 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 no. This this whole stream has been 100% on the level. I'm, I'm never sarcastic. Don't worry about that. No, no, no. <clears throat> actually, that was just sarcastic. Ooh, now we're getting layers of sarcasm. I like it. The inception of sarcasm. Uh. Just going to do a big announcement here while, while I got people watching. Uh, next Saturday is the big stream. Not because I'm drinking a lot and going to hold it in. No. Uh, so my birthday's coming up next week. And I'm going to do a birthday special stream. Uh, Stark of Iron is going to be on. And I'm still looking for maybe one or two more people to join as well, I'm hoping. Um, my friend Lito might be on too if he can make it. And... I made all these movies uh, when I was in high school and they have special effects. They're extravaganzas. 
And I thought it'd be fun. And some of them, like I'm going to choose a long one, it's like 45 minutes long. We're going to watch it live and lampoon it. We're going to lampoon it mystery science theater style. So it's going to be an ego takedown on one of my <laughs> one of my uh, high school uh, home movies. Uh, so I would love it uh, if everyone could be there uh, and rift on it. It's going to be a fun time. It's going to be a, it's going to be a celebration of film, a celebration of uh, mini DV film. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, and after that, uh, I got some other uh, special events. I'm actually going to be going to Hawaii for the last two weeks of March. So I'm going to do two special broadcasts from Hawaii, one about dinosaurs and one on volcanoes. Uh, uh, I believe uh, the Gord King, he's going to join me on, I believe, the one about volcanoes. And also, uh, I'm going to be on the Gord King's uh, show as well, uh, talking about uh, Beetlejuice. So yeah, so that's what's coming up. That's the slate uh, for uh, fermented cinema here, uh, brew and film. You know, uh, looks like this year in Hollywood we got a lot of sour brews, a lot of bad batches. Uh, honestly, it looks like we only got one or two that could be uh, something special. Uh, looking forward to Dune. And everyone, again, remember, I'm in Japan. I'm two weeks late on Dune. Don't spoil it for me, okay? All right, I can see it on March 15th. So please, please wait for me. <laughs> Disney Sheeper, I wouldn't mind being on your show for me, sir. What day and time? Oh, right. Um, uh, which uh, episode are you thinking about? Uh, if it's the birthday one, uh, that will be next week, same time. So uh, if I believe that's Saturday, 4 p.m. EST, uh, 1, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, next Saturday. So yeah, uh, if it's another episode, um, I usually try and keep it the same time. I might have to fudge the Hawaii times a little bit because my flights are actually on Sunday uh, or on during, during the time that I have this uh, stream. So I'm gonna have to move those dates. Uh, but yeah, you're more than welcome. Um, I think you can send me send me a direct message on Twitter. Uh, probably the best way. Uh, and then we'll arrange it there. All right, again, well, I got to say uh, thanks to everyone for stopping in today. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, things coming up again is the birthday stream next week. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, sorry, I can't do weekends. Oh, I work a lot and I'm working right now. Oh, okay. Uh, you can do weeknights. All right, well, uh, tell you what, we'll, we'll work it out then. Uh, maybe not for the birthday stream, uh, but maybe when I'm in Hawaii, I can fudge those ones a little bit, move them around. Yeah, send me a direct message. That'd be great. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, going to be talking dinosaur movies soon. Going to be talking volcano movies soon, uh, both the good and the bad. Uh, I think Total Recall is another one that I'm hoping to get up on the slate soon. Uh, and lots more bad movies coming up, too. So, yeah, stay tuned and enjoy some nice fermented brews. Uh, it's a Saturday in North America. And have a good night there. All right. So let's do my official sign off. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, everyone. See you. Like, share, subscribe. Did you hear that?